It's never about the damn dishes. You're listening to Relationship Renegade. I'm your host, Dr. James M. Mercier, licensed clinical social worker and PhD doctorate in marriage and family therapy. Welcome back for another episode with me, your host, for uh, a chat, relationship chat, um, a confab, right? Uh, confabulation. Confabulous, confabulous, yeah. Actually, that's that's a new word I came across this week. Um, confabulate simply means an informal chat, you know. And and when I came across this word, I was like, I like this, you know. We all do this. We all chat informally. But if I say to you, how about we confabulate? Yeah, try that on for size. Yeah, tell your peoples about that and tell them where you got it. Anyways, thank you for coming back for another episode. Um, In the month of March, in the month of March, we're going to be talking about uh, something that we all go through. It doesn't matter if you're in a relationship. It doesn't matter if you're single. It doesn't matter if you're old. If does or older seasoned let me say it really doesn't seem to matter where you are in life you are bound to get some unsolicited advice and so that's what we're talking about for the next few weeks the topic of unsolicited advice right Uh, and today in particular we're talking about unsolicited advice given to and received by newlyweds. Yeah. Everybody seems to have something to say to newlyweds. If you are um if you are a newlywed, you can remember what it was like when you were put in a circle or not even in a circle at the front of the room maybe or up on stage. And people was just giving you advice, right? Um, Well-meaning advice. Uh, I remember when Herdine and I were getting married, we just, it, it got to a point where I just wanted to hear the next crazy thing. The, I, I, you know, I, I, it was, I just, wa- I just wanted to know how far was this going to go? You know, I was we were hearing things like, um, you know, your standards, happy wife, happy life. OK, uh, also um, things like uh, marriage is a verb. You know, it's not a noun. It's an action. Um, go to bed at the same time or don't go to bed angry. Don't let the sun set on your wrath. Um What's another one? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, don't try to understand your wife. Just love her. Right? That's that's one for the guys specifically because, well, and jab at women too. Who can understand them? Um, uh, Herdeen got some interesting ones. Uh, one that jumps out was uh, that she needs to have like a secret money stash. Right? Like... Like a ghost stash, uh, cash maybe, or a secret account. And over the years, I've come to learn that this is a thing. Okay, so I'm not judging. Um, but that was some of the advice that she got. Uh, that was one of them. Um, if, if you were at my wedding, you might have even heard this one. And I mean, this is now almost 20 years ago. Um, one person, a dear friend, Dear friend, I, I love this lady. She told me that I need to eat lots of spaghetti and sausage so that in two years, right, I'll have a baby boy and a baby girl. Yeah, yeah. And again, if you were there, you know who that is. Love her to death. 
But these are the kind of things we say. Um, we say the newlyweds. Okay, I came across an article, and and there was a quote in there that jumped out at me. Um, just really uh, stupid slash funny things that we say. Um, if you're wrong and you shut up, then you are wise. Okay, regarding marriage. Um, if you're right and you shut up, then you must be married. Right? So these things, sometimes they, they're put out in jest. Sometimes people are like, yeah, no, you absolutely positively want to stay away from whatever. And I, I would, for the next few moments, we're going to take some time, just a little bit, to um, unpack it. Okay, not completely because there's just so much out there, but we're going to pack a few things. Okay, the the first thing I want to say is advice, advice. Okay, generally speaking, there's nothing wrong about advice. Okay, um, but what, but we have to understand what advice is. Okay, advice, um generally come from one's own experiences. Sim simple as that. Okay, they would say to you, yo, my man, bruh, sis, trust me. Okay, I tried X and this is what happened. Okay, I tried A and I got B. Now, they will tell you their advice will be based on the outcome, right? So if they tried X and the outcome was bad, their advice will be, hey, don't do that. But if they tried it and the outcome was good, then they'd be like, oh, yeah, you definitely have to try this. And so if that's the foundation for advice giving, what are we really doing? It's all on a whim, OK, it really depends on who you get. OK, if 50 people try something, you're going to get 50 people who have different reasons for why they tell you to do it or not do it. And then depending on the day you call them, they may, they may change. So um, we definitely want to understand that. OK, one, when someone is giving us any kind of advice and two, if you're the kind of person to give advice. Right. Because there are lots of variables that affect our lives. And if we're going to make meaning and take them as fact and then try to pass them on to someone else, we are potentially creating some um, some issues. OK, now, just as an aside, as a clinician, um, this is really one of the biggest reasons or the reason I don't give advice. Okay. When I have on my clinician hat, at least. Okay. I know you often hear about, you know, getting advice from a counselor or a therapist or something, but advice is something that you will not get from me. Now, why would I say that? So advice, well, let's, let's, I guess, what is advice? Okay. Advice is, would, advice would be me letting you know what I think is best for you. Okay. Advice is me letting you know what I think is best for you. Counseling, on the other hand, right? Counseling allows you to explore, right? Ask questions, go through certain processes. And then at that moment or after all of that, you decide what's best for yourself. That's what I do. That's what I do. Now, people may ask me, what do I think? And, you know, I may tell you, oh, I think blank or I don't think. There's lots of things I don't think about. OK, I'm fully aware. I'm fully aware of, you know, 
when and where my opinion matters and when it doesn't. Okay. Um, rarely will you find me or hear me giving some unsolicited advice. Now, some of people may say, well, hey, you're on a podcast. What do you mean you don't give unsolicited advice? Well, I'm talking to people who want to hear it. So it's a little different. This is more information. But anyways, that's the issue with advice giving, right? The assumption is I know what's best for you. Okay. Um, you will not hear me ever profess to know what's best for anyone. Not at all. Even even my own kids. And again, like parents will do this. Your grandparents will give you advice. Um, the advice that I would give my kids is rooted in my experiences thus far. But it may change. It may change tomorrow based on who I meet or what experience I have. You know, people will tell you um, when you get buy insurance, car insurance, you definitely want to uh, have a zero deductible. Somebody else will say, oh, no, you get as high a deductible as you can afford to keep your premiums low. Well, if you've been burned a few times that's what really affects what you say or do. And I'm saying this because I was recently, still am dealing with the whole insurance thing. But advice really is rooted in people's own experiences. And what does that really mean? How far, how much weight, how much water does that hold? Not a, not, not a lot, okay? Um and so before I ramble too much, let's just leave that there. Okay, understand where people's advice is coming from. Um, so if people are giving bad advice or unnecessary advice, unsolicited advice, um, why don't newlyweds just say no thank you, right? Why not say, hey, we're, we're okay? Well, one, the fact of the matter is they're not okay. Okay, that I know. Um, very few newlyweds are okay going into uh, this marriage thing. Take it from me. Um, and they, they're scared. They're scared. They are scared like you can't imagine. But you would never guess because they seem to be the most happy-looking scared people, right? Right? leading up and on their wedding day because they literally don't know what they're doing. Now, they have an idea, okay? They may have read some books. They may have spoken to some people. But trust me, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're stepping into. And again, this is not a, val this is not a values judgment. Trust me, it's not. But you do not know it until you're in it. And anyone listening to this who's married know exactly what I'm talking about. And this doesn't only apply to marriage. This also applies to any new experience. If you've never been to college, you don't know what it's like. Okay, And people profess to know, but you really have no idea. And so... This is newlyweds, okay? Even when they've gone to see uh, a pastor or a premarital counselor and done a few sessions, they have zero, okay? And I mean zero idea. So when you're scared and people are offering you advice, you're going to take it. You're not even going to question it. You're going to take it. You at some point, you may, you may even have in the corner of your mind the idea that maybe we don't need it, but you're going to take it. You're going to hold on to it just in case because you do not know what you're going to be confronted. Um, so when people are saying, hey, if this happens, do that. Great. Great. And 13 different people can tell you to do 13 different things around the same situation. 
You know, that's what gets a little confusing for newlyweds. But they take it. They take it um, and hold on to it. Hopefully they never, you know, need it. But listen, marriage is full of surprises. It's full of it. So so that's why they don't say no. And because newlyweds and and the unsolicited advice because it, because it keeps coming then everyone around you feels like well hell let me tell you something let me give some advice and so it's a cycle that feeds itself am i saying to break the cycle nope no such thing is coming out my mouth i'm not saying nothing like that but you are uh it would benefit you to be informed about this whole uh, advice-giving dance that we all live in. Hi, we are the Mercier Kids. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking subscribe now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Okay, so that's that, right? So uh, people's newlyweds, they don't know, so they take um, they take it all. And the people giving advice, it's more of their own experience, right? And then uh, on, w- another note about that, um, if you're miserable in your marriage, the advice that you're going to be giving is biased, right? It's skewed. Okay, you're not going to give me anything uh, in the moment that I I could find helpful. I had a guy guy who was going through some things um, in his marriage, and um, we were talking, and he said to me, dude, never do any dishes like what yeah trust me never do any dishes i'm like why but what if i use the plate he's like listen as soon as you start doing dishes you will always do dishes and i'm like okay all right dude thank you all right that clearly tells me that he's going through something in his own relationship because if there's something we know it's never about the damn dishes. Never. So, yeah, I, I, I held that for like 2.6 seconds or 0.26 seconds, let me say that, before I toss that. Um, anyways, I'm back to rambling. Um, one final piece I'll say about, you know, unsolicited advice. Um and this one is is real important, so I want you to hear me closely. Not everyone giving you unsolicited advice has your best interest in mind. Yeah. Not everyone giving you advice has your best interest in mind. And this isn't um, only strangers. That's not what I'm saying. This could even be family, friends, okay? Parents. Yeah, parents too. We do that. We participate in that as parents. Not everyone. And and don't you assume that, okay? I know we like to... Well, I know a lot of people, I can't say everyone, but some people want to make assumptions that everyone is looking out for them. And that's not the case. That is not the case. Um, When it comes to having to decide between you and them, people are not that altruistic. They will generally, most of the time, choose their own survival. Okay, just just so you know. Um, 
and the people who don't have your best interests in mind, the, 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 the crazy thing is sometimes they don't even realize it. They just don't realize that. When I was um, in, in undergrad, yes, in undergrad with Hardeen, we were at a program and she and I, if those of you who've been listening for, you know, any length of time, you know that Hardeen and I, we started dating uh, in junior college and then we went to uh, USF together. So we showed up as a couple and we did like two years uh, in undergrad together. While we were in undergrad, you know, we had friends and classmates and whomever, and we did the school thing. We did it just fine. Years later, years later, uh, I encountered an old classmate from while I was an undergrad, and her dean was with me. And she said to us, damn, y'all still together. And her dean and I just kind of looked at each other, you know, we're like, what? I guess, yes, we are. And she says, you know what? We didn't think y'all was going to make it. We didn't expect y'all to make it. And and so, first of all, one, there's no such thing as making it one, right? Like, we're still here. It's a, it's a daily, it's daily work to still be making it, okay? But two, these same people who didn't expect us to make it, we were hanging out with them, you know, two, three, four times a week in class with them, completing assignments together. And to find out years later that they were like essentially taking bets. I mean, I don't know if they were, but they might as well have been, right? No, they're not going to last and this and that. And so if that's the thought in your mind, how could you offer any kind of advice about the relationship? And you know, y'all go to weddings all the time and you got all of this advice to give. But in your heart of hearts, you're like, man, that girl, she too good for him. Or where did he find her at? Or I give him six months. Like, that's if that's the kind of comment that you're making, there's no way you have their best interest in mind. It's hard to be of two minds. Damn near impossible. Okay? So, even when people are well-intentioned, let me say that, they do not. I repeat, they do not always have your best interest in mind. And so the question then is, how do you know? How do you know? And you know what? I don't know. I don't have an answer that will satisfy everyone, everyone listening to this. There's, I just can't. What I do know, what I do know the people who um the people whose advice i can generally trust that i can take to the bank they are people that have taken the time to not only get to know me but to understand my situation okay they know my situation maybe not all of it but they know enough about what we're talking about where they can offer some advice, okay? Can you imagine if financial advisors only gave advice based on what they thought or what they'd been through? That would be terrible, right? Instead, the good ones, they take a look at your age. Hello? They take a look at your income, right? They also ask, what's your plan? Right, And after they've done all of that, then they can advise you in a direction that will fit your lifestyle, your plan, your goals. That's how you do that. But if they've not asked you any questions, if they've not 
seek to understand where you want to be in five or 10 years or 20 years, I don't know that they really have your best interest in mind because they don't know what it is, right? That's the point I'm making. How can you have my best interest at heart? Like, how can that be the focal point if you don't know what it is? There's just no way. There's just absolutely no way. Right. How can you advise me if you don't know me? You can't. You can't. And if and, and if you can, then a monkey can. Right. We might as well let a monkey do it. That because that's essentially what, what it is. You're just kind of leaving it up to chance. Just leaving it up to chance. Um, so. Definitely. You know what people say, you take it with a grain of salt. Grain of salt. If you ever paid attention to a grain of salt, right? Now, I'm not talking about kosher salt, rock salt. I'm talking about your regular basic salt. Not a lot. Not a lot of weight on that. And more or less, that's how I encourage people to take advice. Again, not all advice is bad advice, okay? It can simply be ill-timed um, or the person giving it can be ill-informed, thus rendering said advice useless. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, I feel like I'm about to get on a rant and I don't want to do that. So let's just do a quick recap, okay? Newlyweds. Or or soon to be newlyweds. Okay, definitely check the advice that you're getting. Okay. Particularly if you're not calling Johnny and Sue to say, hey guys, give us some advice. If you're not doing that and your phone is just ringing and people are like, yo, you know what you should do? Mm, thank them and keep it moving. If people are just going to call you and tell you what is good for you, you know, they're either trying to sell something or they're trying to sell something. <laughs> that That's you show up knocking on my door and I didn't call you. Then, yeah, because generally speaking, I know what I want. I buy. I've already bought the things I want. I don't need you convincing me. Um. So, number one, it comes from their own personal experiences. Simple as that. Okay. And as an individual, as one person, we've not had enough world experience to be able to tell anybody what they should or should not do. Number two, newlyweds, listen to me. Get in the habit of saying no. Get in the habit of saying, you know what? We're good. No, thank you. It, it, you will be okay. You'll figure it out. You'll figure out. Nobody expects you to have all the answers on day one anyways. Okay? And then if you feel like other people expect you to know what to do, then imagine the kind of pressure. Just imagine the kind of pressure that puts on you and your spouse and this new marriage. Trust me. Y'all don't need that kind of pressure. Okay? And lastly, and, and perhaps most important, not everyone has your best interests at heart. Okay? Um, it isn't that you can't trust people, but you definitely want to know not everyone giving you advice has your best interests at heart. Some of the advice you get may simply be a matter of of uh, other people calming their own fears and anxieties, right? Yeah, they they worry so much or there's this and that happening that they then decide, no, you need to do this or you should do that. And a lot of times that's totally irrational. But relationships are never rational, right? And so it comes with the territory. So if you found any value in this episode... Do not, do not keep it to yourself. 
Okay. Let me know by leaving a review on iTunes, Google, Podbean, wherever it is you're consuming this podcast. I want to know if you found any value. And if you didn't, I want to know that too. Okay. Definitely get in touch with me. Uh, get in touch with us. Uh, you know I'm at Dr. Jameson Mercier. Um, you can just Google Jameson Mercier. I'll pop up all over. Um, Relationship Renegade Podcast is on Instagram. If you've not jumped over there, please do that. Just check it out. You know, Mia and I, uh, we're having fun. And so we'd love for you to join us. Okay. Um, as a final reminder, as a final reminder, March 31st, right? That is the last Wednesday. Last Wednesday of the month. Definitely want to join me. Join us. Okay. For the Relationship Blueprint. That webinar kicks off. It's a monthly webinar. So if you don't catch it the first time, you got to wait a whole month. Okay. And I li- I- I'm excited. I'm excited. I look forward to seeing um, what comes out of it. Um, and just give it more value. Really, that's what it comes down to. All right. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I'm always going to uh, do my best when I sit down here on this mic. Um, because I understand that this you know, when, when, when you put out something, you definitely want, you hope people consume it, but I just want to honor the time. All right. So whatever it is you're getting into, have gotten into, take care of yourselves. And I will catch you on the next episode of Relationship Renegades. Bye now.